Now, still to come today on CBS, that marvelous junior middleweight war between Roberto Duran and Davey Moore, following which we will talk with the two fighters. But first, I'm alive on Roberto Duran's 32nd birthday. Join Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, and Sugar Ray Leonard for the start of the fight after these messages from your local station. They have accused him of being a quitter. So Thursday night in Madison Square Garden, he took on this man, Davey Moore. This was the scene in the garden. This was round one of a tremendous war. The referee is Ernesto Magana from Mexico, appointed by the WBA. Leon Washington, the manager of the champion, objected to his selection, particularly since there are two judges from Japan and one from Venezuela, and he felt that there should be American representation for his champion, but there is not. As we see, Moore has the height advantage of nearly three inches and, of course, the youth advantage. The birthday boy, Roberto Duran. The Hands of Stone Man from Panama going around for the brass ring one more time. You can feel the tension in the garden as you can on all the big fight nights. Ray Boom Boom Mancini, Wilfred Benitez, Marvin Hagler, Sal Mambi, Bobby Chacon. Just a few of the champions and former champions in attendance here tonight. And there's no question that this comeback try by Duran has drawn them here. Tim Ryan with Joe Clancy and Sugar Ray Leonard as we are underway in round one. This first round is a very shaky round for both fighters. They're tight. There's no perspiration. In other words, they didn't really warm up in the back. If so, the perspiration has dried up. So here, both fighters are tight. They're going to throw a lot of punches and they react to any fake. Tim, the last time I've seen a garden crowd so weighted towards one fighter was when Emil Griffith, who was also a New Yorker, fought Nino Benvenuti. Everybody in the garden, or just about everybody, except Griffith's family, was rooting for, for Benvenuti. In this case, Davey Moore's the New Yorker, and yet almost everybody in the garden is rooting for Roberto Duran. That it, could be a factor in the fight. You know, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if someone go down in the very first round. Because once again, they're very tight, and... Uh, like Moore just laying with that right hand, but which was not a lot behind him. Hey, that's, that's right. That's the round that the trainer always wants to get his fighter through. Get him through that first round, get rid of some of the tension, bring him back to the corner and try to work out a pattern for him. Duran is not comfortable now. You know, he's still tight, and he's trying to loosen himself up with a lot of those body planks. Ray, maybe more expected Roberto Duran to come out quickly in the first two or three rounds. You may be a little bit surprised that Duran is being a little bit more cautious than the early going. Well, Duran is a better boxer than people that can imagine. And see, Duran is just trying to pretty much feel his man out. David Moore, who is inexperienced yet, he's very, very cocky. He's going to rush Duran. And this might be good for David Moore to stay aggressive, especially his first round. Watching, watching Duran in the gym, Tim, he seems to be susceptible to right hands, which is Davey Moore's best punch. I think, I think Moore's going to work that right hand overtime in this fight. Solid uppercut scored inside by Moore. It brought back a flurry from Duran. Under a minute to go in round one. Duran now is starting to loosen up. And see, Duran has better artillery than Davey Moore. Although age is a factor. Inside, Duran will get off his better shot. He you knows exactly where to land his punches. Well, Duran is by far the more experienced and the smarter fighter. There's no question about that. But Moore is a great competitor. 20 seconds remaining in the first round, scheduled for 15. The WBA Junior Middleweight Championship. Davey Moore has defended it three times successfully against Charlie Weir, Ayub Kaluli, and Gary Guyton. Duran thumbed Moore. Yes, he did. Yeah, let's take a look at the replay of that apparent thumbing. You can see by Moore's reaction and the expression on his face that he was definitely thumbed. 
Looking into Moore's corner, see if we can get a better look at us. Right? No, no, it's not. It's not it's not it's not I saw him. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So you, when you start throwing them punches now, you lower them a little bit. All right. You sure you're going to be all right? Yeah, I should think. Take it okay. Looks like on that first replay, Gil, it, uh, the thumb definitely landed in the eye. No question about it, Tim. Good start for Roberto Duran. Took him a little while to, to get going, but he finished well. Tim, he looks like the Duran of old. He's alive. Challenger, Davey Moore, the young champion from New York City. And in the final seconds, a thumb from Duran, intentional or otherwise, caught Moore in the right eye and did bother him, but he apparently is all right. It does not seem to be affecting him now. No, they were very confident in Moore's corner. They told him, get a little close and load up, which he just did then and landed a big right hand. Ray, it appears to me, however, that the right eye of Moore is, is visibly still a little bit it's half closed almost. Yeah. Yes, it is, because once the guy finally gets thumb in the eye, it takes rounds or so before he gets back to normal. This, At this point now, see, Moore's going to throw a lot of punches. He's really upset, and the key to it, he can't lose his head. You'd rather see a fighter get hit on the chin with a right hand than be thumbed. It's one of the worst things that can happen to a fighter. Now, I'll see what Duran is trying to do. See what Bird Duran is trying to work the fighter and come up with an overhand right. David Moore is susceptible for overhand right. And see, Duran is probably going to be a jab to the fighter and come up with that good right hand. Ray, one thing you see that right hand. Big right hand. He's staggered, David Moore. Moore has to hold on. Tim, they both threw right hands. The right hand was the key to this to this round. And see, Duran's going to work now. He's going to stay on the body, and then he'll work it towards the head when he gets his man in the center of the ring. Wobbly legs for the champion. He's in trouble. More banging to the body. Trying to get out from the assault from Duran. Big see, left hook by Duran. Once again, Tim, see, he's standing in front of Duran. He can't do that. A big left hook by Moore, but that just brought Moore back from Duran. And we had said that Duran lost his punching power. He can't hurt the big guys. We have to take this back because he hurt Davey Moore and hurt him badly. Under a minute to go in round number two. You see what Duran is doing. A right hand by Moore. He's by working Durant. the body. He's working the body very well. And any punch that he lands to the body hurts Moore. He goes, he goes without a good uh, kidney punches. Right now, this looks like a master against a kid with 12 fights. See, that came in the first round. Louis Spada will interpret now for Roberto Duran. Was the thumbing incident intentional? How did it happen as we take still another look at it? Dice si el dedo fue en forma intencional. No, 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 no. Pero... Dile, dile que él está equivocado. Que ahí no hubo dedo. Ahí fue lo que pasa que tengo la mano aquí así y se ve como si fuera un dedo, que la mano entra así, pero no fue dedo. He said that was not the thumb. That the position, no, the argon where the camera is. He said that I was with this part. Davey, did you think it was the thumb? Did you think it was intentional at the time? Well, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but I know the thumb did hit me in my eye because it hit me in the back of my eye, just a flashback in the brain, it just like electric. And, mm -hmm. you know, after that round, boy, the, you know, the, my eye was just... It affected well, you the rest of the way in the fight? Very, yes, it did. All right. The right eye is starting to swell also, Tim. And it's going to be a factor in this fight. The right hand again by Duran. Back in the corner. At the end of the round, Moore was 
is also bleeding from the nose, Tim. He's a great competitor. You're going to see some action out of Davey Moore. If he goes down, he'll go down fighting. Leon Washington says he fights best when he's hurt. Well, he's hurt, so he'll fight his best. Roberto Duran staying close, digging to the body with a solid uppercut. Blood from the nose and more. He's in trouble again. Duran can keep his cool, too, because see, Dave Moore can punch very well. The big difference right now, though, is, is Duran is mixing up his punches. He's really landing some good body shots and then coming back up to the head. And he's hurting more to the body. You see Duran, you, you notice he's thinking now. Every time he throws a shot, it's for a reason. He work to the body, work to the head. He'll throw those body shots, slow you down, bring your hands down, and then he'll come up top. More in trouble on the ropes. Tim, I don't know who's going to win this fight, but Duran has made a believer out of me. He seems to have all that old fire back. Davey Moore battled his way off the ropes effectively, and now lands a solid left hook to Duran. That's a cut now with Duran's right eye. They're bumping heads in close. Whether it came from a blow or a butt, we're not sure. You see why Duran extends that left hand and works the body from both sides. The thing for Moore to do is to keep the attack. A right scored by Duran. Moore missing. Under a minute to go in round three. I'm surprised that Duran isn't using his experience and skill a little more. It's punch for punch. The worst thing you can do. Low blow landed by Moore. A gun near the referee. Not being very effective. Separating the fighters. Scoring if it goes the distance, and that seems unlikely, would be on the 10 point bus system. By the three judges at ringside. You know, if you notice what Duran is doing with David Moore's punching, he's riding with the punches. He's taking off the power of the punch by going with the same direction with the flow of the punch. And he's really hurting Moore to the body. He hit Moore with a punch to the body and Moore lifted his leg up. Sure sign that he's being hurt by the punches. You see there, Duran once again goes with the punch. The body shots, it's a different story. Solid short right by Duran. Davey Moore staying right in front of him, peppering away, but with less sting. There's a bell ending round three. Round number four, Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy and Sugar Ray Leonard. From Madison Square Garden in New York, Roberto Duran trying to win his third title in three different weight divisions. He failed in his first bid at 154 pounds against Wilfred Benitez. Now it is young Davey Moore. Trying to hang on to his crown, making his fourth title defense and finding his hands full. Moore was a 32 year old challenger Duran. He was instructed to, to, to change his tactics. And what he needs to do, work his jab. Keep Duran at base. He can't afford to let Duran get inside because Duran is going to do what he wants to do when he's inside. Then we mentioned that Moore had a bloody nose. So now his mouth is wide open, which is a sign that he can't breathe through his nose and also that he's getting tired. And, and it's only right the fourth eye. round. That right eye is half closed, but he lands a big right hand. Now, Tim, as, as Ray po uh, pointed out, Duran was rolling with the punch. Never got the full force of the punch. That's what he's doing. Very, very tricky, Duran. It's, he... it's misleading because a lot of times Duran, because of his hair, is wet. And you see the, the, the water fly off his hair. You think he's hit hard. But a lot of times he's going with the floor of the punch. You see there, he did. He turned his head at the same time the punch land. The head banging inside. And again, the referee slow to get them separated. Duran always finishes up with that left hook to the body. There's two more body shots. Two more. He's hurting more to the body. That's the difference in the fight up to this point. So he's making Moore go to work. He's making Davey Moore throw a lot of punches and not let those punches land. See, also, you have to think about when you throw a lot of punches, if you miss, you, it tires you out even faster. Ray, he was known as a knockout artist, as a lightweight champion, and his boxing artistry was never really acknowledged until his fights with you. And you have been one who has said this guy is as excellent a boxer as he is a puncher. I know the Roberto Duran like a fool, I know what he's capable of doing. And the fact that Dave Moore stayed inside with them. See, Moore was hurt in the first round, which took a lot of confidence away from him. 
there's another good solid body shot by Duran. He's really taking the strength away from Moore. Moore's legs are getting further and further apart. Ray, you notice that's going to take his punching power away. Exactly. You see to here, Moore just really fighting basically on instincts now. 30 seconds remaining in round four. You, you also have to wonder how long can Duran keep up this up? Well, he's more relaxed than the Davy Moore. Uh, Ray has a big key when it comes to stamina. Once again, he goes with the flow of the punch. Fierce body punching by both fighters in the final seconds of the fourth round. Round number five, the challenger, Roberto Duran, in command in the early going. Leon Washington, Davy Moore's trainer. Asked him, is he hurting you? Are you all right? Moore responded, yes, I am. But Washington told him he is being hit with almost everything Duran is throwing. Timmy also asked him if he could see out of that right eye, and he said yes, because that could be a factor. I doubt that very seriously that he can't see, Gil, because he's being hit now constantly. See the, see the way Moore comes, the way Duran comes back, he'll throw that right hand and always finish up with the left hook. He's a smart fighter. Another thing Durant's going to do, and he did it just now, a left hook, because now I don't, I really don't believe that Moore has peripheral vision. Or oh, so his vision is very blurred. There's those left hook again to the side. And the difference in the fight. Any time now, I expect Durant to land a big, big punch on Davey Moore. Durant now is boxing. He's studying uh, Moore's uh, footwork. He's trying to see whether or not how much movement he has. And you know, from time to time, he'll look down at Moore. And he's now just showing Moore, giving Moore a boxing lesson. Durant landed a solid left hook, catching Moore leaning in. Blood from the nose of the champion, Moore. You see here now, Durant makes a move. He makes a give Moore faint. And more go for it. Oh, did he go for that faint ring? This is what he wants, Gil. Boxing like a master. The only chance Moore has is to make a brawl out of it. He's not going to outsmart Duran, that's for sure. And he's gradually fading. Breathing more heavily, the champion Davey Moore. The right eye, half closed. The nose bleeding. Duran keeps up the pressure. He knows how calm Duran remains, his composure. He gets his fighter hurt, and he stays calm, but yet he stays aggressive. Roberto Duran, who lost only four times in 80 professional bouts, again, he goes with the throw of the punch. Rolling with that right hand and showing more that he's not hurt by it at all. Moore hasn't nailed him solid yet, Tim. Duran is able to stand right there and either deflect or slip those punches. You see what Duran is doing now. The uppercuts are starting to become effective. He's standing right in the middle in the, in the chest of Davey Moore. Moore doesn't have any, any punching room also. Coming down to the end of round number five, it has been all Duran the challenger. Fatigue has definitely set it with Moore. A third title, a chance to redeem himself. But his countrymen in Panama have shunned him since the famous No Mas night against our Sugar Ray Leonard in New Orleans. The champion Moore fighting gallantly but with some desperation and fatigue has been evident for the last couple of rounds. We're into round number six. And we mentioned he's bleeding from the nose. He's also bleeding from the mouth. Duran is just picking him apart. And in this corner, Duran was smiling like it's a party. And it is a party. It looks like his birthday party. 32 years old tonight. The doubters must realize by now that not only is he trim and fit, but he's capable of fighting at 154 pounds. Well, Tim, I'm one of those doubters. At least I was. He's proving it to me tonight. Well, I never doubted, really, because I was in there twice. Duran is capable, as long as he gets his stuff together mentally, far more than just physically. And here, he's in tremendous shape. 
combination scored by Duran. And he hurt, he hurt more with that right hand, Tim. The legs are starting to wobble. And it's the same combination he said Dave Moore up with earlier. You see, also Duran uses his body. He uses his shoulders. He makes you spin. He turns you around. Then he punches you. Watch, he'll step to, at times he steps to the side and throws uppercuts. There he's, he steps to each side. He pivots very well. You notice what happens? After he fades back, he walks back, yet he gets so much leverage on his punches. Well, Moore is certainly trying, though, Ray. He's winging himself pretty good. Standing toe-to-toe -to -toe and trading those body shots with Duran. Davey Moore felt he was physically bigger and stronger than Roberto Duran. What a surprise he has run into here. Moore may go down as well. Because yeah, he's, he's ready to go right shot. now, Ray. He's getting hurt. He's being hit with uppercuts, which those uppercuts are so powerful. And again, Duran pivots side to side. He can never, he's given angles, as a matter of fact, Gil. Yes, he is. There's a veteran player, a great champion. He was a great champion. He's fighting like a great champion. Good combination by Moore, though. Moore has a heart of a lion also. Great competitor, Ray. He was as an amateur. He has been as a young His pro. legs are gone, Tim. Duran patiently, obviously knowing he's got the champion in trouble. He is making a patient but relentless attack. This reminds me of my first fight with Duran. I didn't have the experience yet. I had the determination to continue. And I see the same thing with David Moore. There's that spin and that hook. Gets position on Moore and almost took his head off. Final seconds of the sixth round. Tremendous display by the challenger, Roberto Duran. Game showing by the champion Moore. Round number seven. The chance of Duran, Duran from the largely partisan crowd. Duran followers here, the Latin community of New York out in full force. Tim, Moore's right eye is virtually closed now. He can't see out of that right eye at all. That's a heck of a handicap. This fight will be stopped either by Duran stoppage of the uh, Referee stop to the fight or a doctor because now Moore is handicapped. Left hooks for Roberto Duran will be the key also. Left hooks and right hand on the blind side. Duran now is just pretty much it's like cat and mouse now. You see what you notice what he's doing now. Duran throw a punch, and then he'll work from the left side. And, and Moore has all the courage in the world, Ray. He's still winging, still looking for that one big punch, but it looks like he's overmatched. Too much experience, too much Roberto Duran. This is the 16th world title fight for Roberto Duran. And right here in this ring, in this same building, he burst down to the boxing scene with that electrifying win over Ken Buchanan to win the lightweight championship. Low those many years ago. Here he is back trying to win a third title in three different weight classes. Solid right by Duran. Back to the door. He's got him in trouble again. It hurt Dave Moore. The body shots are doing a lot of damage also. I think what's really going to be the key is a left hook. Moore having difficulty seeing with the warning for holding from the referee. This is all over, Tim. This fight is just about over. It would take a miracle for Moore to come back now. They should have a position look at the eye at this round ends. Under a minute to go in round number seven. The left hook was the punch that brought Moore. Because he's he very uh, He's coming. exhausted. Moore is exhausted. Those body shots took everything out of him. This one is about over. Moore stood there, breathing heavily on the rope. 38 seconds to go with Duran Trenton. Victory here with Moore, gamely hanging in, but that's all. Under 30 seconds to go. He doesn't have a leg under him, Tim. The left hook is doing the most damage now at this point. And now the right eye is something, it's an abrasion of the right eye. Down he goes with solid right hand. Seventh round, Duran sat down in the Moore corner. 
that down. Goes to show you the emotion, Tim. He was so charged up. He didn't know where he was either. I think they should stop this fight in the corner. The fight should be stopped, and I'm sure the doctor will be. is in the corner now. As Leon Washington works on his champion, Davy Moore, the doctor is in taking a close look. Let's see the knockdown again. You'll see two big right hands. There's the one that's in under the canvas. There were two that preceded that that put him into trouble. Well, Tim, I talked earlier about at this point now, the left hook right hand combination will be the key, and that's exactly what it was. Roberto Duran on the verge of one of the great comebacks in boxing history. He had been written off, and even those who saw him knock out Pepino Cuevas tended to think it was a shot fighter he beat. That was a fair consensus to have, but Duran has proven them wrong. I don't this could be the end of Davey Moore. Why let this fight continue? I He's a target. I can't believe it, Gil, that this man come out in this condition. First of all, the express was a factor, and now he's handicapped. He can't really see. He can't see. He can hardly walk. This is the eighth round. Both the doctor and his corner allowed him to come out the champion. Fighting desperately. The referee, Magana, not getting close enough here to see what kind of shape he's in. Look at those combinations. Duran continuing to pound away. Tim, he could be seriously hurt. They had better stop this fight. I cannot believe this referee, Ernesto Magana. I don't know what he's waiting for. He's and what, up and what about the cornermen? Why don't they stop the fight? Held it into the ropes again. More fighting in just in desperation. Duran getting three shots. The crowd in the garden going wild. The referee, Magana. He doesn't have a chance at all. I mean, this is the reason we're supposed to have referees to stop the fights like this. Magana sounded like he said no pushing to Moore. I mean, that is just ludicrous. Moore's not that's pushing. The case. He's falling. He's collapsing on, on, on Duran. He's standing there on end stakes alone. Look he at, can't look, stand. Look, if, if Duran faints and steps away, he'll fall on his face. And he can't throw a punch either. This man is just... He's not there. This is disgraceful. I cannot understand or condone this referee's activity. And that poor corner should stop the fight. He hasn't thrown a punch in the last 50 seconds. There's a towel came into the, the ring. Towel. They threw a the towel, towel in the ring. And the referee has still not stopped the fight. But it's over. That is the worst display of refereeing in my memory. Davey Moore should not have been allowed to take that punishment. But what a show by Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran has beaten the odds and the experts and won his third world championship with an eighth round knockout of the champion Davey Moore. Tim, that was one of the greatest displays that I have ever seen. A guy coming back to win a third title at 32 years of age against a young, strong champion like Davey Moore. What a display. Certainly in Panama, the Lion will be welcomed back to his lair. Perhaps what he wanted most of all, to wipe out the memory of the no mass loss to Sugar Ray Leonard in New Orleans. Perhaps he has been able to do that tonight. It will be interesting to see the response back in his native Panama. He has been in financial difficulty. He has been vilified by his former fans. And he has come back to be the world champion. Here's the finish. A disgraceful finish on the part of the referee. And I think criticism must go also to the Moore corner. for not trying to stop it sooner. Now bear in mind, they can throw a towel in. It does not stop the fight. It did in this case. But the referee is the only man who can stop it, and Magana was not going to stop it even when the towel came in. There is Roberto Duran. Tim, he's so emotional, he's, got, he's collapsing with emotion, and he deserved it. He, he should be emotional. What a, what a comeback. Duran is outside the ropes on the apron. His 32nd birthday party has been a triumph. They did not nail the coffin shut on Roberto Duran. 
Louis, does he feel completely vindicated now? Has he put the memory of no moss, no moss behind him? Dice si te sentís completamente reivindicado de aquella noche del no más, no más. No sé, no sé. Yes, he said that he's completely reivindicated. Louis, what about Panama? How has he been accepted at home? Has he been invited back to his country? What about his country? Dice con respecto a Panamá, si te están esperando, cómo lo han recibido ya esto. Bueno, yo voy a Panamá nada más porque voy a ver al general Paredes, saludar a la gente, pero nada más voy a, nada más voy a quedar un, un día o medio día y me regreso de nuevo a Miami. Yes, uh, they are expecting to come back to Panama. He's going to see the general Paredes, who already sent a plane for him. We are departing tomorrow for Miami overnight in Miami. He's going to stay, arrive to Panama on Tuesday, 3 p.m. This coming Tuesday. And after that, he's coming back to Miami because he's have a record making in, in, yes, in Miami. Yeah, dar la gracia a mis amigos cubanos que viven allá en Miami. Uh -huh. Ellos me, alen, me alientaron cuando yo eh, perdí con Leona. Me dieron la oportunidad y yo estoy muy contento con ellos, estoy muy agradecido con ellos. Y yo tengo que ir allá, aunque sea, a pasearme por la calle de Miami. Con eso yo me conformo, no quiero que me den más nada de ahí. Y a saludar a mi querido yo, doctor Porta de Miami. He said that he's coming back to Miami in order to say many thanks to all the Cuban friends, to all the Latin American friends, and also Dr. Orta, that is a very close friend of him, that he's just coming back to Miami just for that, to say hello to all his friends. Thank you, yes. Louis and Roberto. There was one lingering controversy that we must look at. Should the fight have been stopped? Should Davey Moore have been allowed to be out there in the eighth round? We will cover that controversy when we continue here on CBS Sports Sunday after these messages from your local stations. Mexico City was the referee on Thursday night. After the fight was over, he was asked if he felt that he had stopped it at the right time. Yes. Natural aid uh, always, always thinks I am... Uh, to stop any any fight in the precious moment, uh, in my opinion. Davey, you were taking the punishment. Should the fight have been stopped? Should you have been allowed to be out there in the eighth round? Well, I think they should have let me out in the eighth round. I still had my head. Just that uh, he was swarming on me so much, I just didn't have enough time to get my punches off. Leon Washington was in your corner. You've obviously got a courageous fighter, but anyone who saw the tape saw the hands down here. Should you have stopped that fight? You have the power to say, don't let him go back in the eighth round. Well, what had happened was, I had discussed stopping the fight with David that round before. He said no. So my thought was, I was really contemplating the seventh round, but David Moore had an ability to come back when he's hurt. Now, I knew that he was being punished severely, but I just thought that a little more time might have changed the outcome. And when I threw the towel in, it was just because I couldn't stand it anymore. And I felt that he can always come back and regain a title, but we can never get his health back. Although it probably should have been stopped earlier. Um, you can't really say that because if you remember um, Bobby Chacon, that fight should have been stopped. And the doctor came in three or four times and asked him if he should have been stopped, but the public didn't do this like they're doing it to us. Well, yeah, I think Davey looks almost helpless. Um, yeah, but I know him better than you do or anyone else. He knows himself. He was helpless only due to the fact that, number one, he couldn't see at all. Number two, the referee was the lousiest official I've ever witnessed. He warned David Moore for every little movement that he made. He hampered his efforts. He was definitely a Roberto Duran referee. And I think that the fact that David Moore is a New York boy, a New York champion, he didn't have a chance. He was in against uh, the, the most experienced fighter probably in the world today. He's the least experienced fighter in the world today. And they gave him an 80-20 chance to win. Davey, do you feel that the cards were stacked against you? I thought Roberto fought a brilliant fight. Well, he no, no taking nothing to his performance. He fought a good fight. 
But I didn't think everybody was really on my side for this one, no. Well, and I would like to say something else. Number one, he was a New York champion. There was no New York official. It was refused entirely. He had two Latin officials. Leon, I don't want to obscure the issue, which is, are you allowing a fighter to take too much punishment? I said, I, when I stopped that fight, I thought that he had had enough. I, like I said earlier, we had mentioned it in his corner about stopping it. He said no. And even after I had stopped the fight, he told me you should not have stopped this fight. Louis, could you ask uh, the champion, Roberto, if he felt this fight should have been stopped, should have been allowed to go on in the, uh, in the eighth round? Ellos dicen si consideras que la pelea debió ser parada y no dejarla ir al octavo asalto. Correctamente, para mí debieron de pararla porque este, él es un hombre joven y ha podido ser peor. ¿Entiendes? Ha podido ser peor porque a medida que van pasando los asaltos yo no me sentía cansado, yo me sentía con ganas de pelear, yo tenía la ganas de... Un, con un, yo venía con un instinto muy hambriento que yo estaba dispuesto a hacer el todo por el todo y por eso que cuando cayó el, el cuarto asalto yo me di cuenta que ya no tenía para hacerme daño a mí entonces yo me le tenía que dejar que él cogiera confianza que ya le cogiera confianza cogiera confianza para ir debilitándolo, debilitándolo y así fue que me lo... entonces vos crees que debió pararse en la pelea correcto la... he was feeling that uh, the fight must be stopped at the end of the seven round because he said that he gave a lot of punishment to Davy, and in the other side, Roberto, he said that was fresh, and he knows from the fourth round that he has control in the fight, that uh, Davy does not have anything to do, especially after the seventh round. Marvin Hagler, there have been newspaper stories about a showdown, that Duran would go up in weight. Does he want to fight Hagler next? Would he go up in weight to do that? Dice que eh, se está hablando en los periódicos de una posible pelea con Marvin Hagler, que vos tendrías que ir arriba en el peso de otra categoría, ¿y qué pensás al respecto? Bueno, yo no pienso nada, solamente se habla de eso. Ahora, si dan una buena plata, un buen billete, yo peleo con Marvin Hagler porque yo miedo no le tengo a nadie de que me metí al boxeo. Así que yo no me dejo que nadie me, me meta los pelos para adentro. Así que si dan un buen billete, con mucho gusto yo peleo con Miguel y para mí sería un placer buscar otra nueva corona, que yo sé que me voy a preparar mucho mejor. Ahora, siempre y cuando que den un buen billetito, ¿no? <laughs> para leche. He said that, uh, yes, everybody is talking about the Marvin Hagler fight, that he is not scared to fight with, against anybody, but he has a lot of interest to get a real good, good, good money and he will fight in that condition with Marvin gente, Hagler, la gente, la gente no especially to go for another title. Still another one, number yeah. four. I thought the warmest moment of the night was after the fight, when Roberto was at the side of the ring, and our Sugar Ray Leonard moved up to give him a hug. This was the scene. Congratulations and happy birthday, and here is our Sugar Ray Leonard. Happy no moss, no more. Good luck, Roberto. Excellent job. And Davey, a very courageous effort. Good luck in whatever you decide to do. Thank all of you for being with us this afternoon. We come back, we'll take a late look at all the scores from around the country this afternoon. We will continue. Ask for a return. You can ask. If you want it, you've got it. Just get the money up, I suspect. And we'll continue on CBS Sports Sunday in just a moment.